we have a word from the Lord that we titled the generations of Adam. The generations of Adam. We praise God. So definitely this means that we are going to talk about families. This is very important. So it is amazing because many times I found in the Bible where God is always, always, always tracing the generation of an individual. And uh, you're going to see a whole list of names and you wonder why they are listed in the Bible as it was just to make more pages or fill more pages. But you know that God doesn't work that way. The Bible, every single word that you find in the Bible is important. It has a very significant importance for your life. So if you care about searching and understanding it, you're going to see that it is very beneficial to you. Especially when some people's names are mentioned and others are not. Why one's name is going to be in the Bible and someone's name is not going to be there? There is definitely a reason for that. So the first point that we are going to make is we're going to visit the first family on earth when God created Adam and Eve. Please open your heart and be compassionate to listen to the word of God. Genesis chapter 4 and the verse is 1. The word of God says, And Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. New century said, Adam had sexual relations with his wife Eve and she became pregnant and gave birth to Cain. Eve said, with the Lord's help, I have given birth to a man. Praise God. We give God glory and honor because this scripture looks like in the middle of nowhere, but actually it is not. It has full context that the scripture is actually given. Remember, in this particular case, we are in Genesis 4, which is after Genesis 3, the fall of man. So, in other words, sin had already entered into the world. And then the Lord God drove Adam and Eve also out of the garden to go and live their lives. And we are receiving the first account of the first family on earth. That when they left the garden of Eden after the fall, they brought forth a male son called Cain. Eve became pregnant and gave birth to a son called Cain. And in Genesis 4, 2, the word says that, and Eve again bare his brother Abel. And Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. New century says, after that, after Cain was born, Eve gave birth to Cain's brother, Abel. And Abel took care of flocks and Cain, Cain became a farmer. Somebody say, praise the Lord. We give God glory because when you read such a scripture, you might just be thinking, okay, that is the story of... Uh, but this story is very much related to you and I. Because it is simply telling you that in your family, maybe you are the only one of the family. You are the only child. But if you are the child of your mother, it means that your mother has a mother and your, the mother of the mother has a mother and goes on. But what the word of God is telling us is that the platform of family 
It's something that started from Adam and Eve. This family, Adam, they have now two children, two boys. And the Bible is saying that one is a farmer and the other one is Cain is more like a shepherd. No, the other, yeah, Cain is the one who is more like a farmer and uh, because the shepherd is Abel. Abel is the one that takes care of the flocks. So he's going to bring the best out of his flock. And then Cain, who is more like the farmer, he's also going to bring what he thinks is the best from his crop. Let me put it this way. Uh -huh. So one is a farmer and one is a shepherd. The same way, you might have siblings. Maybe you were a nurse and your brother is a doctor. Maybe you are Uber driver and your sister is a nurse. It is simply saying that we have different Objects, you know, objectives in life, career. This is what the Bible is actually bringing forth. So all of us, you went to school, your sister did not. You have a job maybe your brother doesn't have. You have a job that is well paid and then maybe your brother doesn't have or he has something that is, you know, keeps him very going. <laughs> but this is the platform that the Bible is actually giving up. So now, something happened. In verse 8 of Genesis 4, the word of God says, says that Cain talked with Abel, his brother. And it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and slew him. New century says that Cain said to his brother Abel, let's go out into the field. While they're out in the field, Cain attacked his brother Abel and killed him. Seriously? That is very serious. That is exactly what happened. They are, they are from the same father, the same mother. One is a farmer, the other one is a shepherd. Something happened out of that which proceeded from their heart. The story is that Cain decided to offer something to God. As Abel also did the same thing. It happens that God accepted Abel's offering. The reason was because... Abel's life was right in the sight of God. Therefore, the gift, the offering that Abel brought was accepted. Cain's life was not right in the sight of God. And therefore, his offering was rejected. This is very, very important. Very important because everything is started... You know, it started from the life that is accepted before God. It's not about the gift that we brought. It's not about the gift that they brought. And it's, it's not about the, the gifts that we bring to God. Obviously, we're going to bring quality gift if we see God as a quality God. If one fears God, your relationship with the Lord is definitely going to be in the fear of the Lord. When you don't fear God, your fellowship with God will be anyhow because there is no fear. So you have the ability to bring anyhow type of gift. Even though it might look like something really significant in the sight of human being. But because you don't fear God, so that what you are bringing doesn't truly matter for God. 
The reason is because God is the creator of all things. He is the custodian of all things. How much money are you going to bring God to please God? How much of whatsoever substance that you want to bring to God to, to please him? The cow, that goat, that sheep, that you are bringing as a sacrifice unto the Lord. God created that goat. God made that sheep. So, as we said, it's not about that which you have in your hand that you are bringing to God to please the Lord. The Lord says that he is more pleased when one's heart is brought before him. If you can give your heart to God, this is the greatest gift ever to Almighty God. Somebody should say amen for me. You have to be mindful of that. Very, very mindful because this is where the problem is truly going to come from. And I'm, I'm, I'm saying this. This is just one direction of our fellowship with God. There is also the fellowship that one has with human beings. Because on one side, we are seeing the relationship between Cain and God. And the other side, we are also seeing the relationship between Cain and his brother Abel. Somebody should say amen for me. Please don't lose track. Do not lose track because in everyone's life, this principle it is exactly highlighted that way. Everybody, either you believe in God or you don't believe in God, your number one standing in fellowship is that God, between God and man, even if you don't believe in him, because you did not come here by yourself. You didn't call your mother to say, Mommy, I'm coming. So give birth to me. God put you here. That is number one. And number two relationship that you have after God is with human beings. So right here, we are dealing with families. So it's going to be the first relationship that you have between you and your immediate family. Your siblings. And in this case, we are seeing Cain and his brother Abel. Something happened. The thing that happened is what I told you. Because of that which God did in the sense of one's heart is after him. Therefore, God accepted his gift. Abel's heart was after God. He feared God. The Lord knew this. He feared God by his way of living. He feared God by his way of relating to people. God was pleased with that. Therefore, the Lord accepted Abel's gift and rejected Cain's gift. And Cain was very angry. Cain was very angry that God, at the end of the day, you have to see, this has nothing to do with Abel being in fault. Absolutely not. It has everything to do with that which God did for Abel. And Cain becoming angry. Because you are seeing your brother, your sister being elevated, promoted. Not because of even the school that he went. But because now the heart is after the Lord. This one did not even make it to high standard in, in, you know, in academics. But one way or another, whatsoever that his hand touches, the Lord is blessing it. And you that went that far to school and thinking that you are going to make it high. I mean, don't care about God. All that you want is the money. And uh, for one reason or another, even you are getting high pay from your, from, your, from your career. You are getting high pay. They are paying you highly from your career, but for one reason or another, it is never enough. Somebody should say amen. Therefore, that triggered enviness, jealousy, hatred that is within the heart against your brother, against your sister, in the same house, from the same parents. 
I need everyone and each one of us to really understand this because it is not because of your abilities, but it is the heart that is running after God and the Lord that is blessing one's life. He said, the blessings of God, they make it rich and added no sorrow. So you can also see that the blessings that are outside God, they can possibly make you rich, but you will be added sorrow. Are you hearing me? Okay, very good. And you know that when people have problems, they have problems with everybody. When someone has problems, he has problems with everybody. If you are not happy, you are simply not happy. And in this case, we are seeing something that is very, very drastic. To the extent that the enviness, jealousy, the hatred was translated to be killing his own brother. Eliminating his life. Is that what you have been doing? Have you have that? Do you, do you hear this message and... It is really speaking to you because you have been killing people. Amen. Maybe it's not with gain that you did that. It could be lies that you have told about someone's life and the life is completely crushed. Have you killed someone? We give God praise. This is something that everyone and each one of us have to search within our hearts. And we have to have understanding that we will never get there. We will never get to the point whereby people become our enemies and we come to a point whereby we start killing people. Amen and amen. Okay. Maybe not that extent whereby you kill someone as Cain did. This is the, you know, the, the, the ultimate, the highest of it all. Eliminating someone's life physically from the purpose of God for the person's life over here. It is very serious to kill somebody. Very, very serious. And we're going to see that anyone that kills, you are not going to go scot-free. Never. Never, never. But that attribute of hatred, that attribute of suppressing your own brother and your own sister, the stories are so many within the same family. Siblings. This time, we are not talking about your father went to another woman and brought your, your, your sister. We are talking about both of you from the same parents, same father and same mother. And this is the type of behavior that is actually coming forth. If you have that hatred within you, please, start repenting amend your ways because this is this is not it was very interesting because when the lord did not accept cain's offering cain had not killed his brother but god knows your heart hear me the lord god almighty god knows your heart even though you have not moved in to do evil to anyone but your heart is wicked your heart is desperately wicked and doing evil. It has not come out physically. But God knows. The reason why you are not rising. Is it's because God sees the type of heart that you have. The reason why your offerings are not accepted. Even though you drop it in. And Pastor Charles is always taking the, the, the offering. To, the, to, to go pay church and all kinds of expenses. But there is no blessing that is coming to you. And you yourself can testify. Say that oh this church. It has nothing to do with the church. It has everything to do with your heart. It has everything to do with your heart. It has everything to do with the, the, the fellowship that you have with your God before you step inside this church. Amen and amen to that. We give God praise. So this is the situation we have. One brother that had killed his own blood brother. How is God going to deal with this? So in Genesis chapter 4 verse 9, the word of God says, The Lord came into the situation and God said unto Cain, Cain, where is Abel thy brother? And Cain said to God, I know not. 
Am I my brother's keeper? Are you not God? You see, that is exactly what the Lord God was saying. Cain deserves his gift to be rejected because the Lord knows his heart. When a man has no fear of God, he talks anyhow to God. Listen to me. When a man has no fear of God, he behaves and acts anyhow to God and to people. New century says that the Lord came later, later on and he said to Cain, Cain, where is your brother Abel? And Cain answered, he said, I don't know. Is it my job to take care of my brother? Is it my job? Are you not God? Are you not the one that put him here? If you know that you cannot take care of him, why did you put him here? Basically, that is exactly what Cain was telling God. Can a man speak to God that way? The one who can just take your breath and then you drop dead. And you are speaking to God that way. Well, it is possible because when there is no fear of God, that is what a man is capable to do. Somebody should say amen for me. Okay, so when the Lord heard that which Cain answered to him, in Genesis 4.10, God said, Cain, what hast thou then? The voice of thy brother's blood cried unto me from the ground. The voice of thy brother's blood cried unto me from the ground. So New Century said, said, what have you done, Cain? Your brother's blood is crying out to me from the ground. This is why I said that every time if you, you will go that far to kill somebody, the ground we know, we preach a message two weeks ago and also even last week as well, how the ground is already cursed. That the ground is not in man's favor. When the ground receives the blood of a human being, the blood speaks. The blood speaks. You know, you know how we said that the blood of Jesus speaks better things than the blood of Abel. It, it is that Abel, this particular Abel, that we are. Because the blood speaks. But what is, what, what is it that God said that your brother's blood is crying out to me from the ground. It is crying out to me. It is crying basically vengeance. Do you know that? It is crying vengeance. Abel's blood was crying vengeance to God. That is why we said the blood of Jesus speaks better things. Speak better things than the blood of Abel. Because the blood of Jesus is not speaking vengeance. The blood of Jesus Christ, you know what it speaks? Speaks grace, speaks mercy, speaks favor, speaks goodness of God over people's life. Speaks forgiveness. That is what the blood of Jesus Christ speaks. But the blood of Abel, because Abel was killed in such a way that uh, therefore his blood cries to God for vengeance. And the amazing part of it is that now the Lord was hearing the cry or the tears of the blood from the ground. And God is going to act. If you kill someone, the Lord is going to act. Amen and amen. You cannot be sitting down and gossiping about someone's life and destroying the reputation, the honor of the person's life and be thinking that the Lord is not going to do it. That person might not even know that you are the one behind it. But I can tell you there is a God that is watching everyone. Amen. God is watching everyone. But most of these things, when you do them, you know. You know, you know your own character. You know. I was telling somebody, I said, well, I know that you have called for prayers. But I just want you to know according to what the Lord is, is showing. You yourself, you know that you have not been very good to people, right? You understand that? It takes the Spirit of God to talk to someone who is seeking for the mercies of God. 
But if you are seeking for the mercies of God, then you must come in the platform to be able to accept the truth. When you are wicked, you have to see yourself as a wicked person so that you can repent. Amen and amen. But if you are wicked and you think you are good, you, there is never and nowhere that you can seek for repentance and get it. You will not repent because you don't see yourself as someone who needs repentance. This is it. Do you know that it is everywhere that you go, you become the problem in that area? Have you testified in your own life that you, your life, your way of living, your lifestyle has been problems upon problems to people's life? Do you know that you are living and crushing people's life? Say, Pastor, I know. I say, we thank God. I can pray for you. I can pray for you. And the reason why you are acting this way, this is what the Lord is showing. So I don't want you to condemn yourself. But now that you have come to a point whereby you said, I am tired of this life, I know that my God is going to help you. Because you are tired. You are tired of being wicked. May one come to a point whereby you get tired of being wicked so that you can repent. Amen and amen. This is what the word of God is saying. So the Lord is coming to this situation. And the Lord said to Cain, Genesis 4, 11, He said, Cain, now art thou cursed from the earth. The earth which had opened her mouth to receive thy blood, you know, thy brother's blood from, the, from thy hand. New century says, he said, now you will be cursed in your work with the ground. Listen to this. The ground which is already cursed and a human being is cursed in relation to the ground. What is it that is going to come out good out of this? Already the ground is cursed for man's sake. When even you are blessed to go and till the ground, the ground is cursed and the ground is not going to be yielding forth easily to you. How much more when you are coming as a cursed person to a cursed ground? This is Job had the double problems. Amen and amen. The law said that you are cursed because you are, you are cursed from the earth. Genesis 4, 11, which had the, the earth which had opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood. Now you be cursed in your work with the ground, new century. The same ground where your brother's blood fell and where your hands killed him. When you are cursed, Toward the ground, this is what is going to happen to you. When thou tillest the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto thee her strength, a fugitive, and a vagabond shall thou be on earth. Amen. Praise God. New century says, Cain, you will work the ground, but it will not grow good crops for you anymore. You will wander around the earth. You will wander around the earth. Well, this is what God actually said to Cain. Do you know that Cain was the first... You know, look at how serious it is when you kill someone. When the blood of someone is speaking vengeance from the ground against your life. Look... It is serious because you know that in Genesis 3, it was the fall of a man. Adam and Eve fell. You remember everyone that was involved, God pronounced a judgment. The Lord came to the serpent and the Lord pronounced a judgment against the serpent. God cursed the serpent. The Lord came to Satan and the Lord pronounced a judgment also against Satan. He said that that seed of the woman is going to come after you. When he came to Eve, the Lord pronounced a judgment against Eve. 
Say so you will have hard time to bring forth children. When he came to Adam, the Lord pronounced a judgment also against Adam. He said, because you listen to your wife, therefore I am cursing the ground for your sake. You're going to work hard before you can put food on the table. The Lord did that. But I need you to understand that God never cursed Adam. God never cursed Adam. Even at the fall, such a sin that Adam, Adam and Eve committed. But look at what the sin of killing somebody can do. Or can bring on one's life. Almighty God that did not curse Adam, turn around and curse his son Cain. Simply because Cain killed somebody. Cain, so the act, the act of killing, sharing blood, causing someone's death for the ground to receive one's blood is a very serious sin. It's a very, very, it's, it, it, we can see that it is even more serious than the fall of Adam. Because the Lord never cursed Adam. But God cursed the ground for Adam's sake. But in the case of Cain, who killed his brother, God came around and cursed Cain. So now, Cain is walking around knowing that he himself is a cursed. And he walks on the ground that is already a curse to him. So what happens is that Cain is going to come to God. So Genesis 4.13 The word says, And Cain said unto the Lord, Lord, my punishment is is greater than I can bear. My punishment is greater than I can bear. New century says that Cain said to the Lord, this punishment is more than I can stand. Indeed, it is very true. The type of punishment, you know, over here, they have something called death penalty. They also have something called life sentenced in prison. If you go and kill someone and they find out that you are guilty, even human beings have that ability to go to the most highest punishment that one can receive to lock your life in four corners of, of a wall or iron bars. To sit in there and they can also put you to death. They kill you. They sentence you to death as well. This is how serious killing someone is all about. So Cain now is saying that this is too much for me to bear. And he continues to, you know, continue talking to the Lord. He said, behold, thou hast driven me out of this day from the face of the earth by cursing me. And from thy face shall I be hid. So when one is cursed by God, you have no presence in the, in the sight of God, basically. You have no presence in the sight of Almighty God. He said, and I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond in the earth. And it shall come to pass that everyone that findeth me shall slay me. That is what he's saying. He said, Today, new century, he said, today, God, you have forced me to, the you know, to stop working the ground. And now, I must hide from you. I must wander around on the earth and anyone who meets me can kill me. What is he trying to say? The man was simply saying that darkness covers me. He said, darkness covers my life. You drove me out of your presence by cursing me. You released very strong words toward my life. You said that I shall be fugitive and vagabond. I shall be wandering in the earth. 
People will look down on me and matter of fact, will see me as a murderer. Therefore, I might be walking around and someone might just kill me. This is what the man was actually saying. I don't have compassion for Cain. You understand that? Because God did not have compassion on him. You see how Cain is talking? It's like the thief that you catch. Every time that you will catch that thief, that thief will tell you, this is my first time. But he has been stealing all along. And go find out how, how many people are actually looking for him. But he says, he say, that is exactly the same type of statement that Cain is making here. But God heard that which he said, and the Lord said unto him, Genesis 4.15, God said unto Cain, he said, Therefore, whosoever slayeth Cain, vengeance shall be taken unto him sevenfold. And the Lord set a mark upon Cain, lest any finding him should kill him. God identified that man. He said that, Cain, you shall be recognized on, by everyone that, that lives on earth. They will see you and they will, rem they will remember what you have done. People will see you as a murderer. But this mark will remind people that nobody should kill you. You're going to have to go through your own conscience and your own struggles upon this earth here. Sometimes it's better you die. Because the type of life that you're going to go through after you have done so much wickedness against others. You will not go scot free. No wicked goes hot free. No evil goes hot free. Your sins and your demonic activities against other people's life, you moving around destroying lives, it will catch you up before God gets to judge you, by the way. Amen and amen. So, this new century, Genesis 4.15, the Lord said to Cain, after Cain have said that, no, 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 this is too much for me. When people see me, they will kill me. God said, no. If anyone kills you, I will punish that person seven times more. Then the Lord put a mark on Cain's warning anyone who met, who met him not to what killed him. The mark was upon Cain. And Cain went out from the presence of the Lord, Genesis 4, 16, and dwelled in the land of Nod, on the east of Aden. So Cain went away from the Lord and lived in the land of Nod, east of Aden. That is the garden. He traveled and started living his life. Amen and amen. We get God praise. Now we are going to see because, you know, you have to understand what is happening here. So far, Adam and Eve gave birth to two young boys. Grew up and started killing. One killed the, the other. Now remains only Cain as the son. The only one. Now Cain had moved out to go and live his life. And with everything that God has said and that mark upon his life. So now the word says, Cain knew his wife. Cain knew his wife. And she conceived and bare Enoch. And he built a city and called the name of the city after the name of his son, Enoch. Somebody should say amen for me. New century says, Cain had sexual relations with his wife and she became pregnant and gave birth to Enoch. At that time, Cain was building a city which he named after his son, Enoch. I know that the common question that comes all the time is where is Cain's wife coming from? Listen to me because I know you have the question in your heart. Because Adam and Eve gave birth to Cain and Abel. Cain, killing Abel, remains Cain alone. God pronounced a judgment of curse upon Cain's life and drove Cain away. Cain went out there, started building a city. The wife became pregnant. Where is this woman coming from? Who is that woman? 
Just have that in mind. Because these are some of the questions that people ask. And he said, that, oh, these things, they are not, uh, you know, if, if, if it was just Adam and Eve and, uh, and Cain, who is this woman who became, uh, uh, to God be glory. At least now we know that Cain has a son called Enoch. Praise God. So now the generation is going to be traced. We are talking about Cain's family. Genesis 4, 18, the word of God says, And unto Enoch was born Eride, and Eride begat Mehujal, and Mehujal begat Methusal, and Methusal begat Lamech. Somebody should say amen for me. Amen. Bible is doing that. Bible is doing that. So, from the son of Cain, Enoch, was born Ered. And from Ered was born Mehujel. And from Mehujel was born Matusael. And Matusael begot Limic. Hallelujah. Bible is getting very, very interesting. Okay, so now, one, 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 one. God is tracing the lineage of Cain to Lamech. And listen to this. Genesis 4.19. It is interesting because the word says that a Lamech took unto him two wives. Listen to this. Lamech took unto him two wives. So far, everybody has been taking one. But when it came to Lamech, Lamech decided to take what? To take two. And Bible is mentioning that. Lamech took unto him two wives. The name of the one was Ada. And the, and the name of the other is Zila. Lamech married two women, Ada and Zila. And Ada bear Jabal, and he was the father of such as dwell in tents, and of such as have cattle, more like shepherd type, the nomad type. Please don't lose track. New century is saying that Ada, the first wife, gave birth to Jabal, who became the first person to live in tents and raise cattle. You see that? Okay. Please remember this is, this is the lineage of Cain. A man who is cursed. And his generations. And Bible went ahead and stressed out something very specific saying that Lamech took to himself two wives. And started bringing forth children. So now... In Genesis 4.21, the word of God says that with Jabal, his brother's name was Jubal. So Jubal and Jabal were what? Brothers. Okay. From Lamech, first wife, Ada. One was more like uh, he raises cattle and lives in the tent. That was Jabel. And Jubel, the word says that he was the father of all such as handle the app and organ. So Jabel's brother was Jubel, the first person to play the harp. This is organ. Play the harp and the flute. So he was more like a musician. Amen and amen. We are still on the lineage of a cursed man. So now, that was the kid from Ada. The second wife, Zila, she also bare Tulbakane, an instructor of every artificer in brace and iron, 
And the sister of Tubal Cain was Naaman. So Zillah, the second wife from Lamech, gave birth to Tubal Cain, who made stools out of bronze and the irons. The sister of Tubal Cain was Naaman. Listen to that. It's amazing. So, so far, we have from Cain's lineage, they become people that raise cattle, lives in the tent. They are nomads, move from one place to another. They don't have, they don't have houses. They don't build houses. They move with tents. And the other, the other brother was more like a musician, playing organs and uh, bringing forth the... So, the other wife also had two. One boy who was more into making tools of bronze and iron. You can hear, he was more like a people that are making weapons. Uh -huh. Listen, you know, you have to listen where these things are going. Making weapons. And the wife, I mean the sister, was also Naaman. And then listen to this. One day, in Genesis 4.23, Lamech, he came and said unto his two wives, Ada and Zila. He said, hear my voice, ye wives of Lamech, hearken unto my speech. For I have slain a man to my wounding. Listen to this. I have slain a man to my wounding. And a young man to my hurt. New century says, Lamech said to his wives, Ada and Zila, hear my voice. You wives of Lamech, listen to what I say. I killed a man for wounding me. I killed a man for wounding me. A young man for fitting me. A young man for hitting me. Amen and amen. Okay, this is very important. This is very, very important. Because we are coming from Cain's lineage. And the word of God is tracing people according to what they do in life. From their forefathers. From their forefathers. So, the man one day called his wife and said that, you know what? I have killed. I have killed a, a young man. It wasn't a, it, 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 some kind of a fight, but I have, I have, I have killed that, 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 that young man. And then he said, Lamech said to the wives, he said, if Cain, remember, if Cain, my father, Cain, my father, shall be avenged sevenfold, truly, Lamech himself, 70 and sevenfold. He himself recognized that he said, if Cain's killer is punished seven times, then Lamech's killer would be punished 77 times. It's amazing. This is the situation, you know, sometimes you have to be careful because these things, they say a lot in the spiritual realm. In the spiritual realm. The genealogy of families are something that the Lord is very careful about. God doesn't just let things go like that. Be careful. The father killed his serial killer himself. They go around and say, my father was a drug, a drug addict. That is why my life is what it is. I am a drug seller. Some of these things that people have in their bloodline, they carry those things. They don't even know that these are stuff that are coming from the lineage. And these things, they are in the Bible. So it is important 
It's amazing because there is something about Lamech. Lamech said, you know what? I am done. My life is finished. Because if my father was cursed by God and the Lord set a mark on him, what about me who had eliminated a young man's life? Matter of fact, not only that, because taking two wives was, was already against my life. And how much more now that I have added killing somebody? And you are going down and down and down and down. And you will not wonder what is actually going on. We give God praise. We give God praise. Because there is a blood, a blood, a blood that is called the blood of Jesus Christ. That speaks better things than the blood of Abel. So when one has come to a point to recognize that something is wrong with you from your lineage, you still have the ability to come before our Lord Jesus Christ for the blood that speaks better things to change your generational curse. Somebody should say amen for me. These are the things that people call generational curses. And it follows people. What happened? The type of anger that Lamech had was just amazing. Amazing. So, okay, that is how God ended that family of Cain. That's how God raised Cain's family. There is nothing good out of it. There is nothing good. They were making weapons to kill others, among other tools. Bible calls it, he said he, he, he was making tools with iron. And we know what it means. Even though we might have a need of that, but the reality of it is that there is a bloodline serial killer's lineage that they come from. Anything that comes out of their minds. It's not right in the sight of God. Amen and amen. amen. They were also musicians. Hopefully you are a musician with a clear mind. Amen and amen. And not a killer, yeah. Hallelujah. Okay, now the Lord continues because we are talking about the generation of Adam. We have seen the case of Cain. So now what's going to happen? God only has Cain's lineage with all this wickedness. How can God continue with such a lineage? So now this is what the Lord is going to do. In Genesis chapter 4 verse 25, we read here that Adam knew his wife Eve again. And she bare a son and called his name Seth. For God said she had appointed me another seed instead of Abel, whom Cain slew. New century says that Adam had sexual relations with his wife Eve again and she gave birth to a son. She named him Seth and said, God has given me another child. He was you know, he will take the place of Abel. He will take the place of Abel who was killed by Cain. Somebody should say amen for me. So you can see, you can see the, the parents' position in relation to that which Cain did. When Cain killed Abel, they knew that there was something about Abel that Cain had killed. So when they gave birth to another boy, they called him Seth. And the woman said, this boy is going to replace Abel. We can see in this boy the goodness that we could identify in Abel that the brother Cain killed. This boy is going to replace Abel. This is what the man, the woman said, Eve said that. It came out of her mouth. So now, God is still going to trace the same way that the Lord did with Lamech, Cain, Lamech, and Lamech lineage. From the two wives, now to Seth, Genesis chapter 4 verse 26, it says to Seth, to him also there was born a son and he called his name Enos. 
Then began men to call upon the name of the Lord. Somebody should say amen for me. Listen to this. New century says that Seth also had a son. And they named him Enosh. At that time, people began to pray to the Lord. This is very important. The lineage of the wicked, the lineage of the killers, they don't call God. They have no fear of God. Nobody has. Been. When it was the time of Cain alone, it was like God doesn't exist nowhere. Nobody was praying to God. None of them. None of them. None of the generation of Cain. None of the generation of Lamech. None of them. They were musicians having good time. They were making an instrument to kill each other and all kinds of stuff. God was not in their mind. But when Adam and Eve had another son, Seth, they call him Seth. Then Seth has a son called Enosh. And the Bible says that from that time, from the generation of Seth, people started praying to God again. Amen, amen and amen. Amen and amen. It is to tell you, it is to tell you, when you see them, they don't care about God. Only God knows what generation they come from. It is to tell you, when they don't care about God, only God knows. You know, these words are very important because all of us, we have to, we will come to a point whereby we are going to be traced. We, we were, the, the, by, by the way, the family name that you have, it means a lot. It means a lot. It tells you that you are from some kind of lineage. And the genealogy up to your time. And it descend upon your children and your children's children. And it continues. It is called generations. Now people started praying to God again. There are families when you are born into, you will never hear the name of God. That child will never be taken to anywhere that God's name is mentioned. And these things are, are written in the Bible. Right here. Amen and amen. Okay, now something is very interesting because in Genesis chapter 5, and the verse is 1, listen to what the word of God says. The word says, this is the book of the generations of Adam. In the day that God created man, in the likeness of God made he, him, when God created Adam and Eve, remember the Lord said that let us make man in our own image and our likeness. That is what the scripture is saying here. The Lord said that this is the book of generations of Adam. In other words, these are the people that God calls the children or the generation of Adam. He said for Adam, he made Adam according to his own image and in the likeness of God. New century says that this is the family history of Adam. This is the family history of Adam. When God created human beings, he made them in his own likeness. Male and female created he them, Genesis 5, 2. And blessed them and called their names Adam in the day when they were created. New century says that God created them male and female, Adam and Eve. And on that day, he blessed them and named them human beings. That is Adam. And Adam, listen to this. This is going to be very interesting. Adam lived 130 years. 130 years. And begat a son in his own likeness after his image and called his name Seth. New century says that when Adam was 130 years old, he became the father of another son in his likeness and image and Adam named him Seth. It's the same Seth that we are talking about. The same Seth that brought forth the son called Enosh whereby people started calling God's name again on the land. This is what God is talking about. Please, somebody should say hallelujah for me. There is something very, very important here to notice. Something really important. Could you believe 
that now, when God is tracing Adam's generation, Cain's name is not mentioned. Hear me. Did you see here that when God started tracing Adam's generation, Cain's name is not mentioned. The Lord started with Seth. The generation that started calling and praying to God. It tells you how God trace a family's generation. A family that is wicked whereby the name of the Lord is not called ever. That family doesn't even exist in the sight of God. You that have decided that you will not serve God. They said that, oh, those uh, uh, born again people. And you decided to just live your life and live anyhow. And, you know, it's all about money and all that. And your generation and your family is so powerful. They have money and everything else. But I want you to know that God doesn't know you. God doesn't know you. God doesn't know any of your generation. Do you know that none of the Cain's lineage is ever mentioned here? When the Lord started, he started with Adam and he said that Adam had one son and that son is Seth. That's it. That's it. If you have brothers and sisters that have decided to go against God, that you are the only one that is calling the name of God from your family, you are the only one that God knows. Everyone does not exist. You know, wisdom, because sometimes it's amazing how we said that we are going to stand. We are standing for our brothers. We are standing for our, our sisters. Oh, father, my brother. Oh, father, my sister. Your brother doesn't care about God. Your prayers are not going to work. But it is your responsibility because the Lord said you should do it. You didn't get it, but let me repeat myself. Sometimes it is better for you to pray for God's will. Because there is no prayer, there is no prayer that will save your brother when your brother has decided that he doesn't want to hear anything of God. It is tough, right? But this is the word of God. If Almighty God can see a family and start tracing the family according to the people that call upon the name of the Lord and everyone that is against God is completely forgotten about God. But we stand and say, that, Father, that family covenant, that family covenant, I break it. God will never break that covenant. That family idol that had become a covenant upon the family and tormenting the family, and by God's grace, now you have come to be born again and you stand at the prayer night. Oh Lord, in the name of Jesus, that covenant that is killing people in my family, uh, I come against it. I cancel it. God is not going to cancel anything. Don't waste your time. You better pray for yourself and for the generations to come after you. Do you understand what, what, is, what God is doing here? So amazing. So amazing. God cannot force anybody to serve him. God cannot force anybody to serve him. Why, would, why, why is God going to, you know, waste his time on someone who doesn't care about him? The fear of God. Please, I, I want to show you something because, well, maybe, let, 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 let's continue a little bit. And then our, our, our time is uh, pretty much uh, coming up. So, we, we give God praise for that. So now, Cain's name is never mentioned in the generation of Adam. He doesn't exist. The Lord had blessed the lineage of Seth. He blessed Adam. He blessed Seth. Seth, 130 years. But the, the other thing that I need you to see over here also is that in Genesis 5.1, listen to this. When God created Adam and Eve, the word says that God, in the day that God created man, in the likeness of God, made he him. So Adam was created in the likeness, in the image of God and in the likeness of God. But listen to that which happened here. When it was set, set thin, the word of God says, Genesis 5.3, it says, Adam 
lived 130 years and begat a son in his own likeness. Listen to this. This time is not in the likeness of God. This time is in the likeness of what? Of Adam. Seth, even though Seth is calling upon the name, the lineage of Seth is calling upon the name of God. But the Bible is saying that Adam was created in the image and in the likeness of God. But Adam's son, Seth, was created in the image of Adam, not of God. In the likeness of Adam, not of God. In the likeness. Why is that? The reason is because the fall, Adam had failed. Somebody should say amen for me. It's because of the fall. Because of the fall. This is Genesis 5. Adam fell in Genesis 3. You see, you see how these things can, can actually destroy one's life sin. The Lord is not tracing humanity from his likeness anymore. Everybody has the image of God, definitely. Everyone. But even though after the fall, the image of God was kind of dimmed, darkened. Everyone that went outside the presence of God, your light is not like in the presence of God. That is that image. One day I will talk about the image of God in man. But this is something that we have to watch because now somebody like Seth and his lineage, they are not according to the likeness of God anymore. They are according to the likeness of of the sinful nature of Adam. Of the sinful nature of Adam. This is very important. The image and the likeness of God is the holiness of God and the image of God. At the time before the fall, that was how Adam was. And Adam had the contrary choice that he needed to make because the Lord God wanted to see if Adam wants to remain holy or go against the holiness of God to his own way of living. And that is the choice that Adam made. Adam decided not to maintain the holiness of God. Therefore, Adam sinned against God. And now the generation of Adam, they are all going to have the image of God. The image, listen to me, the image of God. There is no man without the image of God. The image of God, even though it is dimmed, but the likeness of Adam. The likeness of Adam. Somebody should say amen for me. Praise God. This is, this, is, this is something that I needed you. So I'm going to go through some of these uh, uh, words quickly about Seth. Praise God. So they named him Seth. When Adam was 130, he had Seth. And the days of Adam, listen to this. The days of Adam, Genesis 5-4. The days of Adam, after he had begotten Seth, were 800 years. And he begot, he begot sons and daughters. The days of Adam was, what, 800 years. So, Adam lived 800 years. This is important. Those days, I have been telling you all the time. Those days, people were living very, very long. Very long. The man was 130 years when he had Seth. 130 years when he had Seth. It's like probably when you were a baby in your 35 or something over here. But the guy had 800 years. And at that time, he had also, the Bible says that the life of Adam, Adam had sons and daughters. So if you were wondering where Cain's wife was coming from, Cain's wife was coming from one of Adam's children. Because God is saying that Adam didn't have only Cain and Abel and Seth. The Bible is saying that Adam, he had 800 years. And during these 800 years of his life, he, got, he had begotten sons and daughters. So far, you have never heard any girl from Adam's lineage in the Bible. Did you hear that? <laughs> but we heard that Cain had a wife. Cain had a wife. 
So Cain married from one of his own sisters. So when someone asks you, where is Cain's wife coming from? When there was only Abel who was killed and death Cain, tell the person, he said, go visit the scripture. Go visit the scripture. You're going to see that, you know, in Genesis 5, 4, you see that Gen Cain was not the only, uh, only child of uh, Adam. Adam had daughters as well. Praise God. Mm. So, 800 years, and he got sons and daughters. And it continues. And the Bible says, Genesis 5.5, 5, he said, And all the days that Adam lived were 930 years. Actually, it wasn't 800 years. So 800 years he had sons and daughters. But the man lived 930 years, and he died. 930 years, and he died. Praise God. That was the case of Adam. When he came to Seth, Genesis 5, 6, the word says that Seth lived 105 years and begat Enos. We remember how from Enos people started praying again. When Seth was 105 years old, he had a son named Enos. And Seth lived after he begat Enos 800 years, he said 807 years, and begat sons and daughters. Their names are not mentioned, but they had more than. It's Enos' name that was mentioned here, but Seth had other children. In other words, Enos has brothers and sisters. Amen and amen. I know these things, when you read the Bible, I know that when you get to those pages, you flip, you don't read. Because they are just names, 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 names. It's boring. It's not boring. The Lord is trying to tell you something here. So in Genesis 5, 8, the word says that all the days of Seth were 920 years. 920 years. And he also died. In Genesis 5, 9, Enos, when it comes to Enos, Enos lived 90 years and begat Canaan. Not Canaan, Canaan. Canaan. And Enos, Genesis 5, 10, Enos lived after he begat Canaan 815 years and begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Enos were 905 years and he died. Genesis 5, 12, now Enos' son, Canaan, he lived 70 years and begat Mahalalel, Mahalalel. 13. Cain lived after he begat Mahalalel 840 years and begat sons and daughters. I don't know if you are, you are seeing what is happening here, but that which is happening is that all these people that are get, getting sons and daughters, sons and daughters, it is the earth that is being populated. Population is being increased. The law said that they should go and multiply. They are multiplying. We are going somewhere because after these studies, we're going to go, we are going to enter to the case of Noah. Noah generation. How people to, came to be there. This is what the Bible is actually telling you. These are the people that were having children left and right, center and everywhere. And the, the population is being built that way. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So now, Genesis 5.13, he said, after Mahalalel was born, Canaan lived 840, new century, 840 years and had other sons and daughters. And all the days of Canaan were 910 years and he died. So, Canaan lived a total of 910 years, new century. So, Mahalalel. Mahalalel lived 65 years and begat Jared. Begat Jared. And Mahalalel lived after he begat Jehel 830 years and begat sons and daughters. Praise God. 
And all the days of Mahalalel, verse 17, all the days of Mahalalel were 800 and, is it eight? 895 years and he died. Praise God. And Jared lived 160 and two years and he begat Enoch. Somebody say hallelujah. <laughs> he begot Enoch. He begot Enoch. He begot Enoch. Jerel was 162 years old and he had a son named him Enoch. And Jared lived after he begot Enoch 800 years and begot sons and daughters. Enoch. It's the Enoch's turn now. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So and all the days of Jared were 960 and two years and he died. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Make sure that we are not making any mistake here. Okay, so right here. Genesis 5.21. Because in 5.20 we are learning that all the days of Jared were 962 years and Jared died. Then we come to Enoch, or Enoch. Enoch lived 65 years and begat Matusela. Listen to this. 65 years. And he, got, he, 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 he begat Matusela. And Enoch, listen to this. Enoch walked with God after he begat Matusela. 300 years. And begat sons and daughters. And the word says that, verse 23, that all the days of Enoch were 360 and five years. Enoch lived 360 and five years. And Enoch, he walked with God. Verse 24, he walked with God and he was not, for God took him. He was not, for God did what? God took him. Somebody should say amen for me. You know, these things are so interesting because you can see that the generation that calls upon the name of the Lord. A man was born. A child was born. This child is called Enoch from Seth lineage. The guy walked so close with God that he did not die physically. The word says that Enoch, he walked with God. And he was not because God took him. God took him. Enoch walked with God one day. Enoch could not be found because God took him. Methuselah, Methuselah, Enoch's son, lived 180 years and begat Lamech. This has nothing to do with the Lamech that you know of Cain's generation. This is the Lamech, the, the Lamech righteous generation. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Don't make that confusion of the man that is called entry from that uh, wicked lineage, from my lineage. I am from a different lineage. Amen and amen. But the same name. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So Matusela, Enoch's son, lived after he begat Lamech 780 and two years and begat sons and daughters. All of them, they are contributing. Methuselah lived 782 years, and he got sons and daughters, and he died. And all the days of Methuselah were 969 years, and he died. Lamech, Methuselah's son, lived 180 and two years, and begat a son, begat a son. And he called, listen to this, because this one you are going to be familiar with that name. Praise the Lord. Matusela. Matusela. The guy lived 969 69 years and he died. But then his son, Lemek, remember Matusela was Enoch's son. Enoch, that walked with God, that God took him. He didn't die. Now Enoch's lineage is one that is being traced here. 
from Enoch, Enoch lineage came Methuselah. From Methuselah is Lamech. And from Lamech, the Bible is saying that in Genesis 5.28, Lamech lived and 180 and two years and begat son. Lamech was 182 years and he had a son. And he called his name Noah. If you are sleeping, wake up because of the name Noah. Amen and amen. He called his name what? Noah. And you know why he, called, he gave that name? He gave him that name saying, This same shall comfort us concerning our work and the toil of our hands because of the ground which the Lord had cursed. Something is going to happen to humanity. Something is going to happen to humanity. Amen and amen. So the new century says that Lamech named his son Noah and said, he will comfort us in our work, which comes from the ground the Lord had cursed. So Noah is going to do something about the curse upon mankind. Amen and amen. So Lamech, Genesis 5, 30, he said Lamech lived after begat Noah 590 and five years and begat sons and daughters. Now is the case of Noah. Wait, 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 wait. Please don't dismiss anything. After Noah was born, after Noah was born, Lamech lived 595 years and had other sons and daughter. All the days of Lamech were 770 and seven years and he died. 777, 777 years and Lamech died. Noah Noah, Genesis 5.32 And Noah was 500 years old And Noah begat Shem, Ham And Japheth Amen and amen Hallelujah So Noah after 500, and 500 years old Noah was 500 years old He got three sons He got, he got three sons Shem, Ham And Japheth Japheth. This is it. So now we are going to start a new study. We have to start talking about Noah and the ark of Noah and everything that the Lord God is going to do. The Lord is going to destroy the entire earth and everything else. Amen and amen. I want you to know that in this study that we have done today you have seen that the world carries two forms of generations. We have the Cain generation. Remember the same way that we are reading about Seth generation, people having children and you know all, all around, sons and daughters left and right. You should also remember that Cain's generation is also there and they are also having children, boys and girls all around. And both of them are on the same land. Cain lineage being wicked people. And Seth lineage being righteous people. But they were all living on the same land. God stopped Adam's generation at the name of Noah. Being the last one of Adam's generation. Because after, afterwards, God is going to trace a new generation from Noah. Amen and amen. May the Lord bless his word in your heart. Everything that you have heard today, this is what the word of God is written. Now, from now onwards, you will not neglect when the Lord is giving names upon names upon names. You will pay attention. God bless his word. Amen. Hallelujah.